Christina! 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 Yeah, we're not in the trouble. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. And renew your proclamation. Harley? He's coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I gave him. Is it the same stuff? Same stuff. Yeah. Some yeah. No, we're taking it. We're just taking photographs. It was Christina that cleaned the plaque, no one could see it. And every St. Patrick's Day, I used to ask the Lord Mayor's office and, and Dublin Corporation because they used to go over all over the world to our 70 million people which have been banned by the British government. And they go over telling the great joy it is. The reason we celebrate St. Patrick's Day is because the Irish Republican brother were found here by James Stevens on St. Patrick's Day and uh, uh, in New York. Union Brotherhood, John O'Mahony founded it in Dohany's office in New York. So that's why the two organizations, one is for America, they open White House for St. Patrick's Day, they lobby to in fact in that year and all the investment. But that plaque was so dirty no one could ever read it. And thanks to uh, Andrew, who's not here, and Christina who goes and cleans that plaque, Dublin Corporation and the Lord Mayor's office refused to. I asked the Lord Mayor start the St. Patrick's Day parade from here and he's refused to do it. Why did you refuse to clean it? Because they don't want you to know about your sovereignty or your history. As you saw today in the mentions, <laughs> all the air works out, you're only going to be just, uh, uh, just, if you haven't got your sovereignty, you're a slave. And that's what you're, uh, uh, you know, you're a sovereign citizen. Every child is born a sovereign. That's what, and you're entitled to four elements, earth, air, fire, water man's intellect and reason, and all the assets of the state might then go today. So I'd ask uh, Christine to read the, the 1960 The proclamation of the public Naharan, the provisional government of the Irish Republic, to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God, and the dead generations, from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizens Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment, to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying on the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished, except by the destru destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the last 300 years, they have asserted it in, the, in arms. Standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms, in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish public, Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims, the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares itself, itself resolved to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts 
cherishing all the children of the nation equally with ob and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a majority from the minority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the, of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we evoke upon our arms. We pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by its readiness of the children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it was called. Signed on behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Th Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kant, James Connolly and Joseph Plunkett. Okay, we're going to proceed now to the GPO.